so we have a picture, a photograph, with the roll cage drawn in, and then the yellow is the roll cage here. And underneath the roll cage, if you look carefully, you can see some wheels and a bit of a frame. So, rough copy only, but it is a master blueprint right there. Then, try to figure out what to do for front suspension. Did this, not very specific, and actually it won't work. So then, did this one, this is what we think it'll look like from the front, one side of it, and tart it up a little bit, it'll look like this. So we've got some shocks already. Where are the shocks? Wanna grab one? And we think we'll sort of work like this. And this piece is gonna be a piece of big square tubing that happened to be, we have access to, chopped it up a bit. And then, Here's a shock we bought from a neighbor, Brad, we bought it from Brad. Good, old Brad, good old Brad, and then this is the full size swing arm on the top, just sit here, this is the full size swing arm, and the shock is going to sit on this, and it's got three settings because we don't know for sure what height or how stiff. So we figure if we put in three spots, it'll give us a little variation for how hard and soft it'll be. And that gives us room to get a bolt in and out and to go up and down. And the front, we got straight and all the steering mechanism will be here at the front because that allows us our steering arms to sit along here. Normally, I guess an A-arm would be more pointed, but I don't see how we get the steering arms in this homemade design to work, so we're gonna do it this way. Jock goes here. And then, what we have to figure out yet is just this little tower or mechanism. It won't quite be like that, I don't think. But it's enough of a start, we can get going. So this is just a scrap piece of plywood with some more scraps nailed to it. That'll hold it into place. I had to grind out a radius on the ends here. And this one could have been, this bend could have been cut and welded really nicely, but we had a bender that worked, so we used it. The beginnings of the A-arm and the trusty wooden nail together fixture. Do the same, I bet. No. Nope. Oh yeah, I gotta do the other side. Doesn't get much better than that. It's good. Saves on cigarette pills. brackets three holes can't see from the clamp so I'll undo it for a minute three holes in there that'll go for three possible places of the shock and we don't know where it's gonna go and wooden spacer that is the width of the shock so the shock will fit in there this little thing will fit down in here three possible spots and we'll just set it in and we'll do two these will be the bottom Swing on. Okay, we're welded in. With any luck, we'll remember that the second swing arm has got to be a mirror image. Got 
because they haven't built one like this before, we're pretty unsure of everything. So you can see there's a lot of packing going on and no welding for quite a while until we figure we have the heights about right. That'll work. Should be strong enough to keep it until we figure out what's right and wrong. Grinding out these fancy little motor, I mean shock mounts. Because they don't quite give us enough angle when we assemble it. Put the shock in place. It's not quite perfect. It doesn't have quite enough angle. So we're going to go with plan B. I'm going to make a little shock mount that looks like this. So this little, where is it? This little U-shaped part, we'll make one of those. And that won't give us any adjustment because we're only going to make one. But we'll try to tack it on one place. And if it doesn't work in one place, we'll move it over a bit and try it in a second place. So. No quick and easy adjustment, but it'll give us all sorts of pivot room. That's probably why they made it this way in the first place.